from Hollywood, it's time now for... <laughs> Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. Now, this is Art Price, International Press Service. Oh, holy smoke, Art. What are you doing up at this hour of the morning? I'm on the night desk, and I'm sorry to have to wake you up. So am I. Listen, I just got a call, a real frantic one, from a guy who insisted on having your phone number. Well, did you give it to him? He said he's an insurance man, that it was about some insurance matter, so yes, I did. Well, why'd he call you? Yeah, that puzzles me, too, but he was so excited, so, well, so frantic. Well, he probably called the first person he could think of. And he said it was a big emergency. Oh? Did he give you any details? No. And, Johnny, it's aroused my curiosity. Uh, let me know what it's all about, will you? Yeah, sure, sure. Promise? Okay, I promise. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. The State Unity Life Insurance Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the ghost-to-ghost -ghost matter. I'd no sooner rolled over in the hope of getting back to sleep when the phone beside my bed started jangling again. Oh, nuts. Johnny Dollar. Oh, uh, this is Oscar H. Trimley, Mr. Dollar. Trimley? I represent State Unity Life here in Lake City, New Jersey. Oh, look, are you the man who called Art Price over an international press service? Yes, yes, I did uh, get your phone number. I, I knew, knew he'd have it, you're being such a famous investigator and all that. Yeah, well, you could also have got it from Universal Adjustment Bureau, your insurance directory, the long-distance operator. Oh, dear, I, I guess I've been so upset over this whole thing that it never occurred to me, but... Uh, can you come down here to Lake City, Mr. Dollar, right away? Well, it depends. What's this all about? Ian McAndrews. Who's Ian McAndrews? Oh, don't you know? He's the man who founded Lake City. So what's happened to him? Uh, he, he's dead, Mr. Dollar. Or rather, he isn't. Uh, huh? Well, that is to say, he, he died, Mr. Dollar, about uh, five years ago. And? Well, uh, in due time, of course, we paid off the claim on his life insurance policy, $55,000. Everything in order and perfectly all right. Well, then? But now... Oh, oh no, Mr. Dollar. You, you just won't believe it unless you come here and see for yourself. Oh, won't believe what? Ian McAndrews has come back. Huh? Either he or his... His ghost has come back here. Oh, now, wait a no, minute. No, no, it's true. It's absolutely true, sir. Ian McAndrews is haunting Lake City. So please come as quickly as you can. I, uh... I'll think about it. Oh, dear. Is that the best answer you can give me? Yeah, I'm afraid so, until I see how things line up for me these next oh. couple of days. Goodbye, Mr. Trimley. Think about it. I could hardly wait to grab a train. But I didn't want Oscar Trimley to know that. Because I had a strong suspicion that if you can catch a ghost off guard, you'll be one up on him. Expense account item one, the promise phone call to Art Price and International Press. Are you kidding, Johnny? No, I'm deadly serious, Art. But a ghost in the little New Jersey. Yeah, yep, I'll keep in touch. Then I remembered Nancy. Nancy Turner, an old flame, or rather, a young old flame. She'd said something one time about taking up investigation of the supernatural. So, expense account item two, another dime for another call. You old rascal, Johnny, you haven't called me in ages. Well, you know how it is. Uh, look, Nancy, did you ever go ahead with your study of psychic investigation? Psychic? Oh, no, Johnny. I found I'd have to read a couple of hundred musty old books, so I gave it up. Oh, well, that's too bad. Oh, why? Well, I, I've got to run over to Jersey to investigate a haunted town. A haunted town? How thrilling. Except that such a thing is impossible. Oh, it is? Sure. But I'd, I'd kind of thought that maybe you were still... Well, I guess we better forget it. Forget it? Nothing. I'm going with you. Oh, no, no, wait. No I... excuses. I'll put on my face and another dress and be waiting by the time you can get here. Yeah, but look, honey, I... Huh? Johnny. Okay, Nancy, I'll pick you up. Uh, 
Item three, 1085, taxi and train for two to New York. Item four, 50 bucks, deposit on a rental car when we got into Grand Central Station. We crossed over into Jersey and hit Route 22 for Somerville and points west. And every mile of the way, Nancy chattered away like a magpie. She kept quoting some of the stuff she had read on the subject. A lot of authorities who decided that some of the reports on haunted towns and houses and people, things like that, had decided there was something really supernatural about them. And you know, after a while, I began to wonder. Yep, I began to wonder. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Kansas state flag is dark blue, and in the center is the state seal, surmounted by a large sunflower, the official state flower. The seal reflects the history of Kansas, the train of ox wagons going west, for most of the great roads passed through Kansas. An Indian is depicted chasing a herd of buffalo, recalling the words of the official state song, Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. For this truly was the home of the buffalo and Indian. The east is represented by a rising sun, and the promise of future prosperity is indicated by the steamboat on the river and the farmer plowing the field. Above a mountain range are 34 stars, for Kansas was the 34th state admitted to the Union. Over all is the state motto, ad astra per aspera, to the stars through difficulties. Kansas state flag, the flag of the 34th state to enter the Union, was adopted on March 23, 1927. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Ghost to Ghost Matter. Lake City nestled in among the soft, rolling North Jersey hills. But a kind of has-been town. I saw the reason for that in the abandoned mill, the old McAndrews cotton mill at one side of the lake. The same old story, I guess, when a town's main industry closes down, it kind of goes to pot. Nonetheless, it was a charming little place. Population, all maybe four or five hundred. When we finally located Oscar Trimley's insurance office, we found a bit of a gathering there. And Mr. Dollar, that is Miss Turner and Mr. Dollar, this is Charlie Reed, oh, Mr. Mr. Lee Lee Foster, and oh, yeah. Tony Gray. Oh, yeah. We're oh. sort of a local businessmen's club, Johnny, you know. Okay, then let's get to the point. Oh, uh, sit down, sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Johnny, uh, I thought over the phone that you were turning us down. Well, I, I changed my mind, and uh, when I thought of Nancy and her knowledge of the supernatural... Good. That's what we need. Well, yes, you're right. well I am interested in the subject. We're all a little worried about it. Tony isn't kidding. I think we're a pretty level-headed bunch, but, well, this thing has us scared. That's putting it mildly. If it really is his ghost that's plaguing oh, us... Oh, now, you don't seriously believe in ghosts. Well, I'll tell you this. I never did before, but now, well, wait and you'll see. Gee, Johnny. Well, suppose you tell me what's going on. Well, uh, no, 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 Johnny. You'll have to see for yourself. And here. Yes, Charlie, and here. And that means waiting until midnight. Midnight? Sure, Mr. Dollar. Well, just why, Bill? You, you'll see. Yes, in the meantime, you can look around. Say, aren't you quite a fisherman, Johnny? Oh, I'd rather fish than eat, but now look at oh, you. Oh, I love to fish, too. Good, the lake's full of nice bass. Charlie, you can fix them up with a boat, can't you? You sure can. Yes, but if I'm going to Tony, investigate... Tony, you arrange for a place for Miss Turner to stay overnight. Be glad to. Well, now... And Johnny, you'll stay at my home, all right? Fine, but now at no, least tell me... Oh, no, I want you to see for yourself at midnight. Now, meantime, good fishing. Right. Uh, I've got to get back to the shop before Miss Bickley starts screaming about her high five. See you later. Yeah, and I'll come back to the office and arrange somewhere for Miss Turner to stay. <laughs> see you later. See you, Tony. Now, if you folks will come over to the print shop with me, we'll pick up the keys to my boat and some tackle, and you can be on your way. Look, can't you at least give me some idea? Nope, nope, not a thing until midnight. Oh, and we'll all have dinner together at the hotel. Uh, Mr. Turner, well, you ready, uh, Mr. Turner? Johnny? Well, <laughs> you fellas are the boss, I guess. Fishing, Nancy? I'd love it. I'll even give you some of the fast-strike hooks I use. Okay, then let's go. <laughs> There was something slightly screwy about the whole thing. And I don't mean just the talk of a ghost. But when I go fishing, and at company expense, well, who's to complain? 
So Nancy and I spent the rest of the day on the lake. Matter of fact, she caught the big one. By dinner time, we were starved, and the little hotel served us not only excellent cocktails, but a regular banquet complete with champagne. You enjoying it, Miss Turner? Mmm, I love it. Only why don't you call me Nancy? Sure, why not? Charlie, I'll tell your wife. Now, Tony, you stay out of this. <laughs> Mr. Trimley, about this uh, ghost this, business. This uh, champagne, you know, comes from the old Leland Stanford Vineyard. Oh, yes, and it's fine. Uh, but... Finest, I know. But it's time we talk about your ghost. Say, you land any big ones out on the lake? Uh, yeah, Bill, Nancy got a four-pounder. But now, listen, would you... Another thing about this fine California wine. Say, didn't wine. I see you navigating the boat, Nancy? Uh, listen, Brown, would you please, please fellas, got one last year, weighed six and a half. Look, <laughs> fellas, <laughs> fellas, go yeah. over near the old like cotton. Hey, okay, fellas... Look, please, will you tell me a little bit about... All I want to know is... So, I got nowhere. But then, finally, after a lot more food and wine and chatter, we drove off in Tony's car. Now, I'm stopping here in the middle of town, Johnny, because it's the best place to be when things start popping. Like what? Hey, when are you fellas going to stop this runaround and start making sense? You'll see, you'll see. I'm all excited. Look, Johnny. Yeah, Charlie? You see the old tower clock? Almost midnight. So what about it? Old McAndrews passed away at the stroke of midnight, Johnny. Personally, I think that has something to do with this. You still haven't told me with what? Uh, wait. Listen. There goes the tower clock. Oh, midnight. Count them, Johnny. That was four, five... And Johnny, see how all the lights are flickering along the streets? That happens every night? And no reason for it. Look... Bats! Huh? Millions of bats coming out of that clock tower. Yeah. Yeah, I see them. But I don't... What under the sun is that? That's the ghost, wailing. Oh, now, wait a minute. That scream fills the air, comes from everywhere. It's a horrible sound. Johnny. Easy, honey. No, listen. Didn't you hear? That clock struck 13. Yes, Johnny. Why, yes. You ask me, the devil's in old McAndrew's ghost. That's why it comes out of his house every night. Out of his house? Right, Johnny. And wait till you see what's there. Right. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Famous words of wisdom spoken by great men of thought never die but are carried on through history by the people who feel them and love them. When Benjamin Franklin said, they that can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety, he was speaking for all men in all countries. In May 1945, when the 1st Marine Division was making an assault on Okinawa, pharmacist's mate William D. Halliburton, Jr., serving with a Marine Rifle Company, left his place of safety during a terrific counterattack by the enemy. In spite of the deadly accuracy of the concentrated fire around him, Halliburton unhesitatingly dashed across a draw and up a hill into an open, bombarded field to render first aid to a fallen Marine. When his patient was struck a second time, Halliburton placed himself in the direct line of fire in order that he might shield his patient and continue to treat him. Though he could have sought safety until his company advanced and covered him, his first thought was for the wounded man. It was only when the slashing fury of the shrapnel and bullets mortally wounded him that Halliburton was unable to continue his duty. His unwavering code of conduct in the fight for liberty earned him his grateful country's highest award, the Medal of Honor. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Ghost to Ghost Matter. <laughs> Is the front door of this old house always left wide open? Yeah, Johnny. Sure you want to go in? Sure. Come along, Nancy. I, uh, I'm coming. Oh, there was more light around. Oh! Oh, well, that's nice. Slammed right in our faces. I knew it. Unlocked, though. Let me have that flashlight, Tony. Here, here. Hmm. No sign of wires or strings on it. Come on. Oh, uh, okay. Come on, fellas. Now, Johnny. Yeah, Bill? As you can see, there's just one big room downstairs here. 
Johnny. Easy, Nancy, easy. Don't you see Look, that? I admit this is all pretty strange, but a ghost. But well, what else? We've been over this house with a fine-tooth comb. Hey, listen. You hear that? Somebody. Somebody's walking on the ceiling. Uh, listen. Oh. oh yeah, I... That's the kind of stuff you hear. Poltergeist. Noisy spirits. You can hear them, but you can't see them. Don't you see, Johnny? It can't be anything normal or natural. Is that the end? No, sir. The, the old ghost has a regular... See? Hear those shutters banging? There's no wind out there. Why? Why didn't you tell me it'd be like this, Johnny? Let's... Look. Yeah. Lights moving around somewhere outside. You can see the reflection in the trees. But they're green. Ghost lights. Oh! oh. Johnny, look! That's a rocking chair. It's rocking. In front of the window, where old McAndrews used to sit and look out on the town before he died. Give me the flashlight. Here. Mm. No strings or wires on this either. Well, well, that's the end of it. The same crazy routine every night. It's the ghost of Ian McAndrews. That's all there is to it. Well, from what you fellas have shown me tonight, it kind of looks that way. It is, Johnny. But tomorrow I want to investigate these things in broad daylight. I investigated, all right, the old house, the clock tower, everything I could find. And thanks to the help of the boys, we covered a lot of ground. Result? Nothing. Meantime, I noticed that the town, the sleepy little town of Lake City, was being mobbed. People from all over, streets jammed with cars. And as we sat down at lunch in the hotel... Uh, miss, uh, waitress, will you please bring me another cup of... Oh, dear, she didn't hear me. Where'd they all come from? Yeah. Business has certainly picked up around here. Why, yes, I'd noticed that. Any idea why, Bill? Uh, not the least. No wonder Tony couldn't be with us for lunch. And Charlie's at his print shop getting out an extra. Hey, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Aren't you Johnny Dollar, the investigator? Yeah, that's right. Man, can I use you? Now, just let me get a picture. Well, now, wait. Hey, hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay, Johnny, thanks. Thanks a lot. Hey, that photographer's from one of the New York papers. No kidding. Oh, really? Listen, if Art Price at International Press gave out the word about this ghost story... Oh, now, Johnny... Hmm. Okay, Nancy, you all finished? Uh-huh. Then, Oscar, Bill, we're going to leave the check with you and pull out. Uh, you mean uh, leave town? Yep, going back to Hartford. Well, Johnny... I've investigated, I've come up with nothing. So there's no point in staying around any longer. Oh, oh Johnny... Johnny leave. Thanks a lot, fellas. And, Oscar, I'll send you my expense account. Come on, Nancy. <laughs> Give up? Hardly. Sure, Nancy and I hit the highway, but for only a few miles. Then shortly after dark, we drove back. And for a couple of hours, for three or four hours, well, anyhow, shortly before midnight, Nancy and I walked quietly up on the porch of Oscar Tremley's insurance office. You mean you didn't leave a message at my office to be here tonight? I certainly didn't. I found a message from Charlie. Are you kidding? Somebody left a message at my print shop to be here. And I got one at my radio shop. Well, I'll be darned. Good darn. Now, I want... Of course, they couldn't know your handwriting. Uh, wait a minute. There's somebody outside. Huh? Johnny. Huh? What do you... Good evening, gentlemen. Why? I thought you'd left well, town, yes. Johnny. What are you I doing back Yeah, here? that's right. I wanted you to think so. Oh, well, listen. The old tower clock has started to strike midnight. Oh, yeah, that's... Five... Boys, I suddenly realized that in all my investigation this morning, I was being handicapped by what I thought was help. Well, what do you mean, Johnny? Yeah, what's that? I had too much help. Two or three of you were with me every second. Oh, we wanted to be sure you wouldn't overlook it. That's right. You wanted to be sure I would overlook a few things. Huh? Hey, now, wait. That's 11, 12. Well, hey, it only struck 12. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. Yeah. No uh, ghostly wail tonight, is there? Oh, I know. No, fellas, no. Because the ghost is no more. You uh, found the ghost, Johnny? I found out that he's one of you. Maybe what? all of you. Oh, no. what are you okay. Alone, without your careful guidance, I finally located that sub-cellar in the old McAndrews house. You did? 
And that mess of complicated electrical stuff that was making the weird sound effects, the rocking chair, the banging shutters, and so on. Oh. Very clever. Your handiwork, Bill? Sure. Sure. Uh, but, uh, but Johnny... Oh, uh... fellas, it was a wonderful publicity stunt. Especially after international press was notified. But, but you did that. Not only for your radio and electronic shop, Bill, for your real estate business, Tony, your print shop and newspaper, Charlie, and your insurance business, Oscar. Well, now, but Johnny... But for the whole I... town. It's going to put Lake City on the map again. Which is to say, the motive wasn't entirely selfish. Well, no, of course it wasn't. Okay, okay, man. And because of that, and that alone, I won't give you away. Provided the ghost of Ian McAndrews never walks the streets of Lake City again. Well, you can be sure of that, Johnny Dollar. I don't know. I suppose I ought to really hit you over the head with this expense account. But, uh, after all, the cause was a kind of worthy one. So I'll be honest with it for a change. And it, uh, was fun to have Nancy Turner along. Expense account total, including mileage on the rental car, less deposit, thirty-one fifty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. North Dakota's state flag consists of a field of blue bordered with a knotted yellow fringe. Centered is a bird with outspread wings and with open beak, the eagle, king of birds, symbol of supreme authority, power, strength, and nobility. The left talon of the eagle grasps a sheaf of arrows, representing the Indians of North Dakota. The right foot grasps an olive branch, signifying peace. On the breast of the eagle is a shield with seven red and six white stripes, signifying protection by the union of the states. A scroll bearing the word E Pluribus Unum, one out of many, passes through the eagle's beak. Thirteen stars for the original thirteen states are over the scroll. Above the stars is a sunburst for the continual sunshine in the state. North Dakota's state flag the flag of the 39th state to enter the Union was adopted on March 26, 1929. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the most dangerous, exciting incident of my whole career. I break out in a cold sweat whenever I think of it. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Forrest Lewis, Joseph Kearns, Russell Thorson, Sam Edwards, and Bob Bruce. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.